Hey guys, it's G. Today we're going to use the Dutch pour technique and Arteza's premix paints to illustrate the basics of color theory. So the fact of the matter is, to look at color through this color wheel is very one-dimensional and limiting. Sure, you can mix the three primary colors to make most colors, but what this primary color wheel fails to account for is chroma and value. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is called the Munsell color theory and it breaks colors into three dimensions. Hue, which is what we refer to as red, green, blue, yellow, and so on. And then value, which is how light or dark the color is if you were to convert it to grayscale. And finally, chroma, how intense or vibrant the colors are. Once you see the color wheel in this three-dimensional form, you realize that most colors actually exist outside the traditional color wheel. By the way, this PDF I'm using to illustrate comes courtesy of Florent Fargs, who has a fantastic course on color theory, I'll link to in the description of this video. His videos really helped me change how I look to color, so I encourage you to check him out. Alright, so to illustrate my point in the context of acrylic pouring, I'm going to use Arteza's premix paints. They are relatively thick bodied compared to other premix brands. So I'm going to use Brilliant Red, Vermilion Red, and Neon Pink. And on the other side, I'm using Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Blue, and Neon Blue. And that is neon purple up there for reference, although it looks like magenta right now. So I'm going to lay down some base paint right now, because we're going to test these using Dutch pour techniques, because I feel this is the best way to use these tiny bottles. You should buy large size, cheap house paint for your white or for your base paint in general, uh, and use these pre-mixed for the few drops that you need in a Dutch pour. That's the most economical way to use these. Don't try to use these tiny bottles to flood your canvas. So we'll start with the ultramarine blue. I'll drop three different drops to test with three different reds. So first, the brilliant red. Next is the vermilion red. And last is the neon pink. And let's blow. So first, you'll notice the very first one, not much blending happened. The second one blended, but didn't quite give us purple. And then in the third one, we're getting some very vibrant purple because of the neon, because neon is a high chroma color, remember? Now, let's move on to the Thalo Blue. The Thalo Blue, unlike the Ultramarine Blue, has more green in it. Ultramarine Blue has slightly more purple in it. Now we'll add the reds in the same order. Brilliant Red. Vermilion Red. And Neon Pink. So as you can see, very similar results to the Tallow Blue. Very vibrant with the neon, with a high chroma color, like the neon pink. Very dull in value with the vermilion red and hardly any mixing because the paints are a little bit thick when it comes to the brilliant red. Let's move on to the neon blue.
So here you can see I've spread the paint out a little bit more to encourage a little bit more mixing. And I'm going to use the eyedropper tool to show you what shade of purple comes out from the mix of each combination. So the three on the right, so the three on the right are ultramarine blue, the three in the center are tallow blue, and the three on the left are neon blue. So you can see the purples we wind up with from these mixtures range from very high to low value and very high chroma to very low chroma. A lot of them look muddy, some of them look even grey. And it's important to know that if you're using the incorrect red or the incorrect blue, you will wind up with colors that cancel each other out. So what do we mean by cancel each other out? Well, if you look at the color wheel, you can split the color wheel right down the middle and you'll wind up with the warm colors on one side and the cool colors on the other. If you are mixing a purple, it's ideal that the colors you're mixing lean towards the color you're going for. If they lean in the opposite direction, as green does with blue and as orange does with red, you'll wind up with colors that cancel each other out. So for the best purple, use a cool blue and a cool red. And that's it. Thanks for watching my video on the basics of color theory and Arteza's premix paints. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get my videos straight to your feed. This was G, and I'll see you in the next video.